What's going on everybody, it's Rev, and welcome back to another Dauntless video. With the launch of patch 1.0, the latest weapon to enter Dauntless will be available. I am of course talking about the Aether Strikers, a pair of fist weapons designed to be quick, precise, and of course, put the beat down on some behemoths. This video will be a one-stop shop to everything Aether Strikers, specials, mods, strategies, optimal combos, stats, everything will be available here in this guide, and I hope that you find it useful. Before I begin, I want to quickly thank Phoenix Labs, the creators of Dauntless, for sponsoring this video. If this is your first time experiencing Dauntless and want to learn more, you can download the game and play for free over at PlayDauntless.com. If you're looking for more weapon guides, you can check out my playlists on my channel, and if you enjoy my content, consider hitting that subscribe button. Without further ado, let's talk Aether Strikers. The Aether Strikers are a fast attacking blunt weapon that uses its variety of combos to create mantras, the resource that fuels the Aether Strikers special abilities. I won't lie, the Aether Strikers are probably the most complex weapon to date, but with this guide you're going to be well on your way to becoming a martial arts master. Let's start at the beginning. To acquire the Aether Strikers, you'll want to talk to Cat in the main plaza and pick up the quest Meet the Master. Meet the Master is available roughly around the time you complete the quest City on the Verge and fight Shrike for the very first time. So it's a very early game quest, all you need to do is follow the main quest line. Once you have Meet the Master, the objective is simple. Talk to the Scarred Master and she'll provide you with a pair of Recruit Strikers and your first special, Adamant Bolt. As well as a follow-up quest called Striker Training. Striker Training wants you to deal 5,000 damage with Adamant Bolt with both Tempest Form and Karma Breaker buffs active. Sounds easy, but to a new player just picking up the Strikers, not so much. Until we speak again. So let's break away from this quest and talk about the combos of the Aether Strikers so we can better understand how to complete this quest. The Aether Strikers have three total melee combos you can perform at any time. These three different combos generate one of three different mantras that is associated with their respective combo. So it is important to weave all three different combos together in order to have access to all the different special moves. I'll go over those special moves in a moment. Focused Assault, which is performed with three light attack inputs, is a quick and easy way to generate one mantra. While this is your weakest combo, it is still a necessary force to generating one of the three mantras you'll need to get optimal damage output. Focused Assault also costs no stamina. Spirit Barrage, which is performed with one light attack input and two heavy attack inputs, is a six hit combo that deals moderate damage and is great for proccing weapon unique equip effects. The heavy attack portion of this combo costs a small amount of stamina. Mighty Squall, which is performed with three heavy attack inputs, is your highest damage combo and also covers a pretty long distance moving forward. This combo also costs a small amount of stamina. While rolling, you can go into your respective combos of the attack input you rolled with. Rolling light attack inputs are able to combo into Focus Assault and Spirit Barrage, while rolling heavy attacks can combo into Mighty Squall. Now that we know the basics of the attacks, let's dive a little bit deeper and talk about mantras and specials. Mantras are generated when you connect with the last hit of each of the three unique combos. When you acquire a mantra, your character will flash a color-coded particle effect based on the number of mantras collected. Red for one, yellow for two, and blue for three. Repeating the same combo multiple times will result in no mantra gained and flash the same color, respectively, to the number of mantras you currently have. Here, you can see I keep using the same combo, so I keep flashing red. I can't stress this enough, you need to use all three unique combos to generate all three mantras. When a mantra is generated, you gain access to two abilities. Your tap ability, Surge, and a special ability based on the number of mantras you have. So let's talk about Surge. Tapping the special button will cast Surge. Surge is a three hit attack that deals light damage and moves you forward based on the direction of your camera. You can redirect this attack at any time while in motion, but contrary to its appearance, this attack does not have iframes. Surge is great for gaining advantageous positioning and closing gaps that Behemoths can create. But its most notable function is that it resets the mantra timer. 
When you generate a mantra, the mantra timer begins to time out. To prevent this, there are two ways to refresh the timer. Gaining a mantra and using Surge. This is where Surge shines. When a behemoth gets away and you're not in range to generate a mantra, utilize Surge to close the distance and reset the timer. The damage of Surge is minimal and you can easily generate another charge when you reach melee range. It'll be a big loss of DPS if your mantra drops at an inopportune time, so I highly recommend being loose with your usage of Surge. That's your tap ability, but what about the rest of the special abilities? When you gain one mantra, you gain access to Tempest Form, a fast casting buff that increases attack speed by 20% for 30 seconds. Not much more to say about this special, but it is very potent and very important. When you gain two mantras, you gain access to Karma Breaker, a charge punch that deals heavy damage and leaves a lingering dot effect on the behemoth for 35 seconds. As a fun fact, at base, this dot deals 400 damage every 5 seconds, and it does scale. This dot damage also cycles through the whole body of the behemoth, bouncing from part to part until the debuff expires. Furthermore, it is worth noting that Karma Breaker can interrupt. When you gain three mantras, this is when you gain access to the special that is in your special ability slot in your loadout. When you first start using the strikers, that ability is going to be Adamant Bolt, a beam projectile that deals scaling damage based on how many of the previous mantra buffs are active. Let's take a moment to rewind now, back to the Scarred Master, and look at the quest. To complete the quest, you need to acquire each of the mantra buffs, Tempest Form, and Karma Breaker, and then fire off an Adamant Bolt. When you do it successfully, it should look something like this. I want to take time to reiterate this quest at this point of the guide. This quest is teaching you how to optimally DPS with the strikers. Completing this quest and understanding how you completed this quest is important to your future experience that you're going to have with this weapon. Tempest Form and Karma Breaker individually increase the damage dealt of your three mantra ability. These are big hits that should be powered up as much as possible to maintain optimal damage. Now that we're feeling confident in our fundamentals and Listen completed that quest, closely. let's progress and look at the problem. weapon customization yeah. options in the mods and specials. At Striker Mastery level 6, you'll receive your first mod called Cyclonic Strike Plate. Cyclonic Strike Plate, while still very hard to say, increases the duration of the Tempest Form by 10 seconds. And when Tempest Form has less than 10 seconds remaining, damage is increased by 15%. This mod is the most beginner friendly for the strikers, understandably so since it's the first mod you'll receive. And while this mod is not the strongest, it is still very effective and has solid uptime due to its passive nature. The second mod you'll receive at Striker Mastery 10 is called Echo Brace Driver. Echo Brace Driver increases the potency of Karma Breaker's dot effect by 5% every time you critically strike. This is probably the strongest mod for the strikers, depending on your playstyle. If you're interested in a crit build, definitely pick up Echo Brace Driver to further your output. Because the strikers don't get a lot of value out of attack speed, you can substitute some of your cell economy for crit cells and gain the benefit of extra damage. Something to consider, Brace Driver also changes the rotation of your mantras slightly. Applying Karma Breaker as soon as possible is in your best interest since crit is passive and will be building the dot's power as you keep comboing. Opt to use Karma Breaker first, then Tempest Form before dropping your 3 mantra special on the Behemoth. The last mod you'll receive at Mastery Rank 16 is called Inertial Fist Guard. Inertial Fist Guard increases your surge damage by 25% while also giving you a move speed increase by 8% that can stack up to 3 times. I am really perceptive of this mod, because I feel that it has potential to be a really strong mod if Surge ever gets a damage increase. Furthermore, in Trials, during a fight like Shrike, where the Behemoth runs around a lot, keeping pace with additional move speed is still a damage increase, whatever that's worth. Ultimately, I would experiment with what you like most out of the three mods. None of them are really anything to write home about, and all of them are good during any fight. 
but Echo Brace Driver definitely has the highest potential impact, and so it gets the honorable mention. Lastly, in weapon customization, there is one additional special that you can unlock at Striker Mastery Rank 8 called Titan's Crash. Titan's Crash is a big ol' clap that you can use to deal heavy damage as well as heavy stagger damage. In most cases, this will be the go-to special once unlocked, no questions asked. Its damage is higher than Adamant Bolt and deals stagger damage on top of it. The disadvantage is that it has less range than Adamant Bolt. However, this is hardly seen as a setback due to the mobility and speed of the weapon. I want to heavily note that the damage difference is not colossal. It's actually quite small. But the big difference is that one deals stagger damage and one does not. That concludes the weapon customization options. Let's go over how to interrupt properly with the strikers next. Right out the gate, all of the heavy attacks from the strikers can interrupt. Most notable of the heavy attacks is the rolling heavy attack that gives a nice sweeping hitbox from left to right to land an interrupt unscathed. Similar to the swords rolling attacks, this attack sends you propelling forward, so compensating the timing and distance is going to be required. You can also use Karma Breaker to flawlessly interrupt if timed correctly. This requires you to go into the animation much earlier than you may be used to and meet the behemoth before its attack frames trade with your hitbox. This is a little more tricky to pull off, but it looks super stylish and is really, really satisfying. Lastly, you can do a good old fashioned trade with a behemoth. The neutral heavy attack is snappy and accurate, so landing it on an interruptible behemoth is relatively easy once you have the timing. True to the nature of the weapon, learning the interrupts of the strikers can be difficult. Taking time to practice these key interrupts will serve you well in pushing your striker abilities to the next level. Before we wrap up, I want to talk about potential damage cell options the strikers have because the build variety is very friendly. Because attack speed has really high diminishing returns on the strikers, and the strikers, for the most part, are not a very stamina heavy weapon, consider taking other damage options outside of attack speed like crit or part damage depending on what you're trying to accomplish. Potential damage cell options could be Cunning, Discipline, Rage, Rage Hunter, Overpower, Predator, Aether Hunter, and Sharpened. Formulate a build based on the strengths of the mod and effects of the current weapon you have in your build and create your own playstyle. The doors are wide open here. With that, that's going to wrap up this Aether Strikers guide. I've been awaiting the arrival of this weapon for a very, very long time and it's easily becoming my favorite weapon in Dauntless. I hope this guide eased the process of learning the weapon and made it equally as enjoyable for you as it was for me. If you enjoyed this video, a like would be really appreciated. If you want to see more Dauntless content like this, consider subscribing to the channel. And if you wish to support me in my work, you can use creator code REVIRAD in the Dauntless in-game store or the Epic Games store. And lastly, I'd like to thank Phoenix Labs once again for sponsoring this video. Check out the link in the description or head over to playdauntless.com if you want to learn more and play for free. I'm going to close out this video with a late game hunt versus Shroud so you can see the potential of the weapon in action. I hope you all have a lovely day. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you on the Shattered Isles.